All right, ladies and gents, welcome to some Acropolis. Uh, played this map twice yesterday. It's actually a map I like a lot. Uh, it can be very complicated for players to play this map. Lots of different talking points, despite the map being primarily land, which high-level players tend to like to stick to in Age of Empires 2. Um, in the blue, we've got Kind of Blue, which is fitting, I guess. This player is known as Kino. Um, so if I say Kino, don't be too confused. Uh, see, Mexican player is currently 2350 ELO, so he's up there. Uh, he goes inactive at times and then comes back and tends to have some crazy streaks in him. And then here we have a German player named El Matador. And uh, it is Saracens for kind of blue, and then El Matador is playing as the Poles. Uh, both of these players, in case you're curious, do fit into that top 100 in our scene right now. So the thing about Acropolis is you start up on a hill, right? And you do have wood to take there. But it's all awkward to take uh, because you make a lumber camp and then before you know it, you chop through it. So in an ideal world, you're going to take this wood. But obviously you have to leave the security of your hill, which takes a lot of time. And uh, also scouting that early is, is also kind of difficult at times, depending. So El Matador has done a really good job. Uh, up on your hill, you do have a bit of stone and gold, but not a lot. So long story short, you want to expand to other resources like this. Uh, and it's all about expansion. But again, leaving the security of your hill over time. I like the Saracens, honestly. Uh, I think the Saracens can do well here. I think Saracens are actually underrated, even with their stable play, because they have higher HP camels. And uh, even though you know they, they have the archer option, which players tend to go for more often than not, I think you could actually see this, some use out of the Saracen stable here. I think it's very underrated. Um, not enough people use the Saracen stable just because of how good the market can be with their archers to break through walls. What's happening with this deer here? Deer's running away. Anyways, we had a couple of people say, uh, hello, I'm new. Uh, Nick says, what's up? Congrats on the engagement. Thank you very much. Uh, hey, T90, amazing to see you and Dave in Heidelberg back in rainy old England. Amazing you still have a voice. Keep up the amazing work. Thank you, thank you. It's nice meeting you, if that's what you're, you meant by that. Of course, don't remember names, but I did meet tons of people while I was there. It was so cool to... to uh, Get to hear some kind words from fans. I, I'm a little sick right now. Apologies for anyone listening that maybe could could uh, pick up on that. But it's nothing too crazy. I seem to be on the mend already. It was the day I flew home that I woke up with a sore throat. It was probably after all the casting. But it's nothing more than that, thankfully. Uh, I think they did do... Uh, Rbase is asking about the wood lines on this map. So there were some really bad Acropolis map gens... Uh, within the last year on the ladder. And I remember because I forget what event it was, but I used Acropolis for an event. And so myself and my team, we we fixed a lot of the issues. Um, and I think then it was more of a like big conversation with pro players and anyone who's like complaining about maps for the ladder. So I think they fixed it. Um, they've done a really good job here. You can see how there's usually gold on either side of your hill. And there's generally quite a few wood lines to go to as well. But I will say that balancing Acropolis is extremely difficult. Uh, it's not easy, and it was probably one of the biggest nightmares that we had with any of the maps over the years with any of my events. All right, so we talked about the Saracens a bit. Um, the Poles, I actually think they could be at a disadvantage here because what you want is you want to be able to have a lot of farm space, and you don't really have that farm space here. Um, I mean, it's there, but it's also, like, kind of not... <laughs> Uh, because of all the tiny little wood lines. In fact, you could make an argument for your second lumber camp to maybe be on these chunks of wood here simply for the farm space later on. And we'll have to see. And here come some villagers. Great scouting from both players. El Matador seeing his opponent's going to make a second lumber camp there. Didn't actually scout the first, but has to assume that there has been one. And then here on this side, you could see blue. And he's already scouted that lumber camp as well. Scouted the berries, scouted some of the gold. And there's a barracks. Feels like it's going to be a scout build here for El Matador. And to be honest with you, it looks like scouts as well from Kinda Blue. Again, a.k.a. Kino. Uh, T90 cast tomorrow too for community games. Yup, it's on the schedule, guys. So if you come to the stream, fb.gg slash t90official, it updates to your time zone below the stream. I think it's a little awkward to find, but it is there every week. And then it's also on the Discord. And the Discord's really the place to go uh, if you want to be certain that the schedule is actually updated on this page because sometimes it's all that last week's or something. 
But yeah, again, same thing goes for community games. I might not be able to push it to like eight hours or something, which is normally what I want to shoot to, but we will be back with Kami games. Also, you cannot wall this. You cannot wall in this rock terrain, but you can always build a little bit on it. It's weird and confusing. There's a stable. There's a stable. And again, look at the scouting, guys. Like, this is... This is something that might not make a big impact here because they're both going scouts, but it's still such an important thing to get in the habit of doing. There you go. Uh, were you thinking of participating in Warlords? 256 entries on Liquipedia. Uh, no, I decided against it. Eight players are invited, and then only another eight can qualify. I'm just... It kind of discourages anyone at my level to, to try and play, in my opinion. You have to wake up. Actually, that villager's stuck. Um, you have to wake up an hour before the games you play to check in, and then you have to wait around an hour, and then it's a best of one, and then you have to wait and play best of three. And again, with only that many qualifying spots, I decided I'd just rather sleep in a little bit and do my thing instead of trying to qualify. I think my focus as a player is going to be a bit more towards T Titans League Season 2, uh, which obviously there's an opportunity for me to maybe qualify for gold. Uh, when silver comes in December. So we'll see how motivated I am and whatnot, as I'll also be casting and covering the event. Just passing. Both players with three scouts. Uh, we'll find out soon. Uh, players walling up their wood lines. And uh, right now, liking how they're both playing. I did lose to Kino on this map yesterday. He played very well. I made a lot of army, and I was very surprised at how well he was able to... Mitigate damage. His damage control play was impressive. But look at the micro there from El Matador. El Matador kills the Spearman. El Matador is going to kill a Villager as well. Could actually be more than that because of the hill. Uh, of course, I talked all this, uh, said all these good things about Blue. But Blue's going to lose two Villagers there to El Matador's amazing micro. That was very well played. And now, you know, speaking of damage control, if you're in Red's position, look at Red. He's like, I'm too close to the TC. You can't do this. Now Red should probably just, you know, make a few Spearmen and try not to take many losses here. If there's too many Spearmen out, the other player will sometimes switch into Archers here, but we'll see. So far, very impressed with how El Matador has played this. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, 1890, well done with once again with the awesome commentating at Red Bull Wolo. Thank you, Ploof. Thank you. I, um, you know, very critical of myself. Always feel I could do better. Um, and oftentimes when everyone's like, wow, great job, great job, great job. I don't feel like I've done a great job. I try and stay on top of myself. It's at very high standards. Honestly, it's one of the rare times I feel like I really brought my everything there. I, everything was clicking for me mentally. Dave obviously did a great job with me as well, so I had a good time. All right. This, this is going to get interesting here. So Red has killed two villagers and has the full work farms, right? So everything's looking good for Red at the moment. However, the one weakness for Red is that everything's focused right here, and this wood line is about to be towered. What a great decision here from Kinda Blue. And also, this is a pretty even fight over here. Spearman's going to have to get brought over. So I think the correct decision here is to drop your own tower and shoot this down. That's what players used to do in the past on Acropolis. Of course, this is the first time it's been in ranked in a while. It might seem bad, but the best way you can take care of this if this is walled up is just tower here and garrison and shoot it down. And both players have not stopped making army, though. Blue has made a lot more spearmen than anything. And keep an eye to the resources on, for Blue, because Blue is a market as well. And Blue's going to try and mine some of that stone there. Interesting. These villagers now have to run all the way over here for wood, which I suppose is good. But look at, look at how nice this would have been. I think scouting the side resources are so important. In the game I played yesterday, I actually, I kind of threw it, to be honest. He, he beat me. He had a really insane army production because he was Berbers with cheap stable units. But I found that I was booming up my eco, that it was only as good as it was because I had TCs where there's wood and stone and wood and gold in these corners. Another villager is going to get picked off here from El Matador. Very well played. That's three villagers killed here. But this game isn't over, guys. This game's definitely not over. We'll see if the Polish player can continue to make knights. 
when the Saracen camels are out. And it looks like kind of blue is going to be able to make those camels before red can make knights. Uh, Frankie, I was just saying that I'm feeling better. Um, my throat's still a little tickly, as it is when you're getting over sickness, but not pushing myself too much today. Close game. All right, so uh, let's look at uh, the blue setup here. So it doesn't really have the farming eco, and whoa, it's going to add a range. Wow, okay, so this tells me it's going to be cav archers. Because if you're making the archery range now, you're only going to have an archer or two by the time you're in castle age. So someone taking their time like this tells me cav archers every time. At least it should be at this level. Yep, Daniel, thank you. Lots of villagers on stone here. Of course, you receive some gold income as well if you're poles. Uh, this could mean an early castle, potentially, for red. Might have some issues with the wood lines, right? Like, if cab archers are coming out, could massacre those wood lines. Did red see that range? Red saw one range. Red's still looking for more opportunities for damage. You can see how awkward it is with these wood lines. Five scouts could definitely take out one spearman. There's these scouts. Red still scouting to find this man. These guys are very active with their armies at the moment. <laughs> this is like, even just the one scout here. He might just be scouting the rest of the map, but look, he found those villagers too. Very impressed. What's up, Emperor in a Bucket? And more spearmen. And you could consider taking that fight, right? Once Bloodlines comes in. And we've got three ranges now, but kind of blue's economy just doesn't seem near as strong. You've got all the eco bonuses at play for poles, plus you've got three additional villagers. It's actually four. And it's all confusing because of what you're seeing right now, but I guess if you look at the idle TC time and then also the vill kills, it should be four. And Town Watch was also research, though, and this is a big problem you have when you're trying to mass cav archers is the scouts can still be all over you, but the spearmen are still moving around. There should be enough spearmen. And here comes Blue. So Blue hadn't scouted that woodline yet. He might actually run into this. Now he knows. And I think Red needs to drop a TC there instantly. I think that's what I would do if I'm losing the spearmen there. Obviously, you are going to have some knights on the way. But yeah, panic that down. I would even send more villagers there. The nice thing about your situation, though, is that Polish villagers do heal up over time. So that helps you. It's not like you're going to have weak villagers the whole game. And the scouts have actually been brought and brought back. And this is very well done from El Matador. Who, again, just has a much better economy right now. But a, a big thing you need on this map is wood. I like the value from the scouts as well. I like the patience again. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to fight you. I don't need to now because the TC's up. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Now... This is pretty all in, it feels like, from Kinda Blue. The Cav Archer Mass is the most important thing right now. You don't necessarily need to get kills right now with the Cav Archers. You want to get to like 20 of them. This is the situation where I think Blue is going to regret not running home. And we have Husbandry as well from El Matador. So that's going to make the Cavalry stronger. Or sorry, not stronger, to make them faster. And man, even the Scouts are doing so good here. See the Cav Archer Mass back home, but things are definitely looking more barren as far as the eco goes. And, uh, well, Red's running out now, and Red's going to run right towards those golds, so Blue's going to have to wait. And there's the town center up on the hill. Interesting spot for that. Hmm. Hello, baskets. Cav Archers should be able to push this back because they have the hill. No bloodlines on the Cav Archers yet either. That'll take them to 70 HP. I also don't think Husbandry's been in, but the knight is being blocked by the scouts. They're all kind of bumping into each other. I think the key right now for El Matador is drop a castle somewhere, and there it is. That's a odd castle to place if you're in a rush, actually, because you can't really wrap around. <laughs> but, I mean... Yeah. You know what this reminds me of? Actually, I should look at this. It reminds me of that one goat... That semi-blocked Tato's castle before the conclusion of the Red Bull Finals. You guys remember that? <laughs> Can you imagine if Leary had more army there? Oh my god. If that game was closer when that castle comes up, or, or is attempted to be placed anyways, it could have been a big problem. 
All right, so the castle is going to go up. Still no ballistics, still no bloodlines. At this stage of the game, if you're going cav archers, you don't have those upgrades. It tells you everything you need to know about your economy. Um, is awkward up here on this hill, though, for El Matador at the moment. He doesn't actually have a ton of working eco. It's like all of his farms have been delayed, gold miners, everything. Um, army counts 17 to 25. Two TCs are actually, well, they could be working for kind of blue. And it's actually going to be El Matador who's kind of blue about the situation because his farming eco's delayed, denied, and everything. I mean, he's got a lot of migrants here. And now he has to drop a market just so we can balance things out. Any ballistics yet? No ballistics. Food eco is the priority, it seems. At the very least, you need husbandry. Okay, husbandry's on the way. Wouldn't surprise me if he queues up bloodlines then afterwards. I like the control from Blue, though, because he knows the army's coming over here to deal with him. So he tried to loop in on the other side, but that's what was so good about that castle there from Red. Hmm. Oh, gosh. Okay, so Husbandry comes in just in the nick of time there. Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, what did you do on your days off? I saw you visited Strasbourg. Did you visit any other cities and countries? Yeah, so we were in Zurich, Switzerland for two days, and then we were in Strasbourg for two days. And then we were back for another day off, uh, which would have been Friday. Just, you know, getting prepped for the final day and everything. And then, of course, ended up going home on Monday. These villagers honestly should have died a long time ago. The fact that these guys are still alive is epic. The scout was also just kind of waiting there for a while. And the scout might end up killing... That guy right there. Yeah, he does. But that guy's going to live inside the tower at least. It still kind of seems manageable for for Blue. But it, I'm not sure if he has the numbers. He actually did kill more villagers over here. Three villagers killed. Still no ballistics or bloodlines. Like This is not normally something that should be possible. Now, honestly, if he had ballistics bloodlines right here on this hill, I mean, these knights would have big problems. There's still no castle, full castle age armor yet. No chain barding is an issue. And actually, guys, like, El Matador's farming eco is not where it needs to be. Look at his economy right here. This is 75% of the economy. That is just simply not good enough. A couple of villagers go down there, but now the cab archer mass is whittling down the knights. And we have ourselves a game. Especially if Blue could drop a castle here. Can you imagine how sick that would be? Oh, man. It's going to be even better now. Another TC. In the, another TC. This is, this is very dangerous at the moment. Because your instinct as a player is to always produce villagers out of the town centers you have. In fact, especially these days. Oh, man. If only he read the situation and dropped it forward. I know his army's going the other way. But, but especially these days because people use select all town centers... And just queue up and, and just shift clue, uh, shift queue villagers, excuse me. So, as this TC could get denied, very good town centers to place for protection, I have to say here, which is maybe why Red did it. But my point is, is if you have that many TCs, you're probably not going to be making that many knights. Still no ballistics for the cav archers. This castle for blue does go up, though. And these cav archers are going to run away. These cav archers ran into a scorpion. Uh, these cav archers really need to flee back towards the castle. Speaking of villagers, Blue has had a lot of idle TC time, I've noticed. And still has a large portion of the economy up on the hill, which is not what you would want. 80 villagers versus 66. Only 14 knights right now for El Matador, who definitely still has the lead. But I mean, I could see this changing a little bit. In case I haven't noticed it already... I mentioned it already. Ballistics would be really nice. I'm just going to repeat myself for the sixth time there. That's when you can really start to force fights against the knights. And okay, so now Blue has the idea to drop the castle. But hey, I mean, this one pretty much makes it so Red can never stop this. Red can try. Ah, I shouldn't say never. Again, if Ballistics was in, then all these knights would be getting hit. Instead of the volleys missing, it's not bothering me at all. 
And then we've got Cav Archers over here, but Red's attention is split. He thinks I have to deny this castle because if I don't deny this castle, I'll have big problems. Oh god, those villagers are all dying. But now you've got Cav Archers over here still. Mameluke! Mameluke's actually not a bad unit to make in this situation. 72 villagers versus 94. Army count for red very low, though. But can red deny this castle? Because if it goes up, all of this is free for the taking. It's currently at 30%. Look, these villagers need to come join the party, I think. The Mameluke goes in after the Manganel. Let's go, Mameluke. That actually, that might be helpful enough because I think the Cav Archers could pick off the rest. Yeah, look how good the Cav Archers are. Even without Ballistics, it's because without plus two armor on the Knights because he's boomed up so much. And now the Cav Archers dive here. You can actually feel the lag right now. We've got Germany versus Mexico. I don't know what server they're on. But I played blue and I can tell you that his micro is normally a little bit better than this. It's just really hard for him, it seems like, to move the units around properly. In the end, though, this castle is going to complete. And, and this... It ballistics comes in, man. <laughs> Somebody get me ballistics or I'm going to lose my mind. But if ballistics comes in especially, this is a big problem. There's more farming eco for blue. Still no horse color, by the way. Like, really far behind in eco upgrades. But it's just gone crazy on the cab archers. <laughs> hey, look! This villager's back on stone, which is funny. If only there was ballistics! <laughs> uh, but here's my worry for red. Like, red is building, what, town center number six now. But the farming eco continues to get hit. And blue just spotted that. So blue's going to deny this town center and could maybe deny all these farms. And then all the new units are going to go here. This is amazing. I also love the patience from blue. He didn't fire right away. He waited until he got beyond the villagers. Because he knows the villagers have to run that direction. This is a really fun game. Don't you guys like this? I, I really feel like Acropolis is a fun map. You can't play Acropolis clean in most cases. It's always going to be messy. I also like how Blue realized that the Scorpions were making this area um, awkward for him to, to be aggressive against. So he just switched it up and went to the other side. Okay, this is not a cheap upgrade, but when you have 110 villagers with poles, you can get it. Salacha Privilege. So now Red's going to try and solve the problem that he's been having. We've got four scorpions coming over here now. And with that upgrade, the knights are going to be 60% off gold. Scorpion, actually a really good unit to have against the cav archers and against the mamelukes at the moment. I think blue is just not expecting there to be that many scorpions on the map. And eight scorpions is very rare. Okay, cav archers here. Still no ballistics, but hey, I don't need to mention that. You guys have eyes now. God, Kino, seriously. Okay, no, I, I can't stop mentioning it because it's bothering me so much. Kino, my friend, if you could just please get that for me, that'd be great. I think a lot went according to plan for red early, but the, the amount of idle time in this game has been insane. He's trying to get his farming eco back up. Of course, you get 10% of your farm's food instantly when you complete it around a full work. So with the amount of farms that he's been placing, the food boost alone has made this a strong situation. Mamelukes and Cav Archers. Feels like a composition that could definitely dominate the poles. But the economy is so much better for El Matador. And you also have to remember that, like, Mamelukes do cost food and gold, which is going to delay any potential imp time for blue. And there goes red on the way to the Imperial Age. All right, and we'll pick off a few more villagers. Look at the KD. It's been a very close game. Eco KD, 21 to 20 as well. Quite a few weak cav archers here, though. With this castle being here, that could be the key, right? Especially if another one comes up. I think what would make a lot of sense. I, actually, he's kind of doing it here. But I was just going to say a castle here would make a lot of sense as well from red. And then you kind of protect this whole corner. It uh, looks like we'll see a bit of a switch into some other type of unit here for El Matador. He's going to try and switch into ranges. But there's just so much army to keep track of here. Oh, God, but he's going to sandwich this. Oh, he's got the knight. So now the cav archers have to run, but there should be scorpions here. And they're going to, it's going to go shoot the front. Shoot the front. Quick wall? 
Okay, well, the Cav Archers are running away, and they will eventually die anyways. Meanwhile, <laughs> I mean, this isn't exactly looking pretty either. Still a minute away from the Imperial Age, though, is El Matador. And still has so much army. Was never able to complete this TC. And now, uh, Kino or Kinda Blue is going to click up to Imp as well. I think you just continue to make Mamluks from here, guys. If you have the castles, uh, that is going to be a long-term concern, though, if the Trebs come out. Have archers will meet up with the Mamluks, and there's more! How many town centers will this player build? So many town centers, my god! Mamluks are great against the knights. They're also going to be great against the villagers. And guess what, guys? You don't need ballistics. He doesn't need ballistics. That's why he didn't research it, because... Mamelukes aren't affected by it, and look how how fast the knights go down. Now, I still think it's worth it for Red, because his economy is insane and his knights are dirt cheap. Any other civilization you take that engagement? Actually, you know what? The Mamelukes didn't even do that well. I just want to believe in Mamelukes, so I, I think I misjudged that one, but... Okay, Cav Archer's running around. Okay, Cav Archer's trying to deny the TC. Mamelukes and Cav Archers do deny the DC. That's awesome. But we've got knights running into the eco. We've got more knights on the way. We also have Red building up the ranges to go into Arbalest. And he didn't even he didn't even go for Trebs. He just said, screw your Trebs. Or screw making Trebs. I'm not going to do that. If Red loses this game, that might be something Red regrets, obviously. Because Red has been an imp for a long time now. But I think El Matador realized that it's just all numbers that are going to matter. Not necessarily army quality, and going for conscription means that your army production is going to be much faster than your opponent's. We're going to see Blue try and go Mamelukes with Heavy Camel. And with the amount of camels that are on the field, if Red actually gets the numbers of range units, it's going to be very hard. Also, you can't really raid with Mamelukes and camels. I think El Matador might have this one. He's definitely over-booming. Um, he definitely is a player, so I, I play him a lot, and I've been watching him more and more. He, uh, is very, uh, what's the word? Has a lot of muscle memory, right? And you kind of saw in this game, it was just like, add TCs, add TCs, add TCs, add villagers, add TCs, add villagers. And now, I think in his mind, he's just cycling through the things he feels like he needs to do, and he's just continuously making villagers. He has way too many villagers. I do this sometimes too. It just complete overboom. Wow, it is cool to see. No, he clicked the wrong one. And I think this is even more expensive than Zealotry. He's researching counterweights. It's the wrong tech. Oh no. <laughs> so counterweights is new for the Saracens. It replaced Madrasa, which was definitely would have made it on an upcoming uh, video of useless technologies. Uh, this should be coming out this week. But anyways, uh, counterweights, like, adds extra damage or something to your trebs. I think all your siege or something if you're Saracens. He definitely meant to click Zealotry, which would give more HP to his camels. Which would apply to his mams, and it would apply to Heavy Camel. But he will assume that he has that now. He's still at 150 HP. But he would be at 180? Or 100? Is it 170? Forgive me, I forget. I think it's 100... 70 would be the max HP. Um, yeah, but but of course he doesn't have that HP. And he doesn't have the economy. And as I stated, the production's insane. The eco's insane from El Matador. He really is a quick player. And he had the timing on the trebuchets perfect. The fact that he could get away with uh, going for conscription and then the trebs has made the difference for him here. Fun game, though. I, I personally enjoyed it a lot. I think that it's a bit easier to go for the knight eco approach uh, in terms of... Well, your, your eco is going to be stronger in that position. Uh, cab archers have to get so much damage done all the time that it's very hard to catch up economically, which is what we saw from blue. Because it finally has gotten to a point where his eco is actually looking really good, and then all of a sudden red's just destroying everything he worked for. That blue is back over here. He must have got some vision from that gate. I um, probably won't even deny this. I could be wrong. I see Reg is probably going to send some army over there. And here come the Mamelukes and the Camels. If only Zealotry was in. 
I like what we're seeing here from uh, Red. He's just going to focus down the Mamelukes because it's easier for them to engage because they have some range. But who can make more army? Red can. Who has what I consider to be the more expensive army composition? Blue. Heavy camels are not cheap. We're even seeing some Hussars now, which, of course, are a good raiding tool. I mean, what aren't we seeing here from Red? He's producing out of all of his buildings. Arbalest? Olbuks? Hussars? Cavalier. He's making everything he can. Also does have one relic in the bank as well. I think Blue Blue took that fight, considered it a victory, and then is going to look up at the population and say, man, this is bad. Normally what officially ends the game from here, if not this, is a big uh, raid of Hussars on the other side. Like, that should be in Red's mind to try and just raid the other side because this side's already kind of locked down. Uh, hello, is this low elo? Uh, depends on your definition, I suppose. But no, these guys are top 100 players. Nothing about this seems low elo to me. Except for maybe the lack of ballistics earlier. Look at those villagers box down the tower. Ugh. I mean, cheeky from blue, I guess. I wonder if it's that one villager from earlier in this game. 149 villagers, 47 on food, 40 on gold. Tower goes down. And Blue's, Blue's going for his last stand. This is the classic, uh, if I play on for too long, then it will ruin T90's opinion of this game, and then he won't upload me losing to YouTube strategy. That's what that was. But yeah, Blue finally ends up realizing the game is over and resigns. I like this map a lot. I think what's so interesting is like the fight for map control in the wood. What I felt was key here from the winning player was first off the scout micro. The scout micro was really good. Also, the spearman defense was clutch. But the going to stone and then dropping the town center on the wood and then eventually the castle was so nice. Obviously, it looked a lot different back then. But that put red into a winning position. Blue did an amazing job with the cav with the cav archers, but it just felt like too little, too late, and lost too many cav archers early on. I feel uh, due to the lack of upgrades, but truthfully, had lack of upgrades because the eco was just out of whack. Um, polls. I'm sure you guys know this. They have uh, what many consider to be an economy that's too strong. Uh, certainly, if you play it like that, seventy five thousand resources. Their economy is just disgusting. So if they get the lead on you, you really have to punish them quickly. Yeah, I think this will hit YouTube at some point. I'll be curious to see what people on YouTube think about like messy games, uh, and then also about games that, um, uh, games like this on Acropolis. Uh, I personally really like Acropolis. It might just be because it's different, right? But I wouldn't want to do Acropolis nothing. I wouldn't want to do a full Acropolis tournament. But I think it's a, it just brings a different approach of approach compared to something like Arabia. So I personally really like the map. Also, what I like about this map, I think, is that you tend to see uh, fewer archer plays, which is pretty common on a map like Arabia because the players are so far away. So uh, normally it's more like stable units or cav archers, which I personally really enjoy and feel like can be really fun to watch. What I mentioned about Matador is again, like, he, the way he clicks and does things spikes his APM. I think he uses scroll wheel a lot. Um, and he also, like some players got into the habit over many years of like spam clicking formations because there were these weird things in the past where if you kept changing your like defensive attack, defensive attack, uh, I, I could go down the list of things, but they got into these weird habits. And so effective APM and capture age picks all that stuff up but like look this is like one minute 17 into the game and he's got 189 apm it's so crazy i think he actually might have the highest effective apm on average of any player in the top 100 and just because he like spam clicks kind of useless things at times <laughs> look five minutes in the game like these are all crazy spikes <laughs> i don't fully understand it but i could tell you that obviously like don't need that much APM at this time. So something's going on there.